Hi everyone. Today I've got the wonderful Tor Webster with us, with us. And Tor, could you please introduce yourself and share how you were drawn to Avalon? Sure. Thank you. Thanks for the um, opportunity for this interview. Um, yeah. So I've lived in Glastonbury for twenty year, years now, and I'm a tour guide here. I've been. Um, doing tours for at least half of the time I've been here and learning about the myths and legends that fascinate me greatly and my company is called Tours Tour of the Tour which um, has uh, uh, yeah it's been been very wonderful service to to Glastonbury and uh, and sharing of the myths and legends so uh, how is it how I relate to Glastonbury is that the other part of the question so um, yeah the, the reason I came to Glastonbury really uh, was partly that my my parents moved here uh, my mother moved here because she she was very interested in as I was the story of Joseph of Arimathea and um, so that is still very much part of my my journey here, Joseph Arimathea, and and Mary Magdalene. So <coughs> Joseph Arimathea is the the great uncle of Christ, and um, also the father of uh, Mary Magdalene. So they came here after the crucifixion of Christ to to uh, set up a place of learning, a place of healing, and a place of peace after after his death to continue his teachings of love. So that's really what inspires me by by Avalon, by Glastonbury. And it's that that incorporation, the re part of the reason they came here was because of the Druidic Celtic connection. And the Druids and the Celts really helped the family of Christ to, to ground the teachings here and spread them all over Europe and all over the world eventually. And that's why I love Glastonbury because it is such a melting pot of, of faiths and traditions and beliefs and really inspires everybody to, to release themselves of their preconceived ideas of spirituality, come here afresh and anew and to 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 really tune in to the to the transformational energies of Glastonbury to to kind of springboard their their own journey into the birthing of the age of Aquarius. That's really, really lovely. Um, how do you experience and express your spiritual path in Avalon day to day? Well um, as many in Glastonbury, um, I do it do it pretty quietly and um, and uh, solitary, because there are so many many faiths and traditions in this town. You can you can get caught in in kind of ideas and concepts, but um, but it's better to kind of hold your traditions in a more gnostic way and Glastonbury has always been a Gnostic place. Uh, it was it, the Gnostic concept really came from the, the the Christian scholars looking at you know what 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 Christ's message of love really was and it was about basically don't follow me be like me and to to have your own connection to to spirituality and to the love and the peace and the healing that um, that he represented, um, so he brought down basically this new wave of love, which is part of the turning of the wheel, the procession of the equinox, which um, which is now, as I mentioned before, we're coming out of the age of Pisces that he he birthed two thousand years ago into the age of Aquarius, which is more an age of of union coming together of the divine masculine divine feminine and not not separating through religion not separating through through 
politics or, or learning or any, not separating in any way, but to really find the union in yourself to, to represent it in the world. So it's really, it's about, it's about a, a kind of Gnostic knowing way of, of letting go of the, the old, but being inspired by, by the true essence of, of, of spirituality that is really available in our hearts, which um, for me is, 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 is connectable through the Christ consciousness because that is part of our, our culture in, in the West, I would say. And um, transforming that into a really grounded, tangible love that transcends beyond the, the distorted love that most relate to in, in thinking that love is only about sex, about relationships, about, about, about um, taking. It's, all, it's really love is about releasing and, and opening up to your heart, really. That's what love is about. And if people can, can sort that out, you know, and not get so caught up in the fear and the anxiety of, of what sadly religion has, has put upon them of restricting love and making it a taboo, um, then, then you know, we'll, we'll do an amazing, amazing thing for the future. <laughs> That's so well said. Cool, thank you. Um, what does the word goddess, or what does goddess and the divine feminine essence mean to you? Um, I don't know too much about goddess. It's not really something that um, that really resonates with me personally, because it, again, it feels too separating um, to God and goddesses. I like the concept of the Divine Feminine, I think. The Divine Feminine feels far more flowing and uniting of the Divine Masculine. But really, I want to go beyond the separation even out of Divine Masculine, Divine Feminine, go into, into the Union, the, the Divine Union, which I think uh, we are going into thick and fast. And I see that in the, the goddess, um, local goddess tradition, that there is that coming together again into that, that union. Um, uh, so that's, that's really positive for me. First, first of all, how I relate to, to the um, Divine Feminine. And it's interesting that you're, in, you're interviewing me on the um, Samhain Eve, because really this is a time of the gatherings the gatherings of, of, of souls, of ancestors, of, of y uniting. And there isn't really, there isn't a, a separation of divine masculine, divine feminine, or male or female. There, it, is a, it is a complete kind of um, remembering and revisiting the, the ancient beings that have, have transcended beyond body, beyond mind, beyond restrictions, and they, they re reunite into, into the oneness, which, which I consider love and light. And uh, they, they come back uh, to kind of tell us, you know, let go of your, your preconceived ideas, let go of your, your, your stories, your, your, your anxieties, and, and just, just be, be love. Don't try and analyze and conceptualize just just get on with it you know <laughs> but um some of the the archetypes that i really attuned to in the divine feminine world is um of course mary magdalene who <laughs> that was an interesting sound there um mary magdalene who who really represents the the divine feminine of the Christ consciousness because as far as I see it and it might just be my my kind of concept I think that that Yeshua actually allowed himself to be crucified because part of his journey and it was probably too soon but part of his journey as as always it was to to tell man and woman about the sacred union but men in that age, they were farmers and fishermen and, 
and um, builders and carpenters, they couldn't get it. They couldn't. They couldn't conceptualize the the divine feminine in them. That that just was so beyond their concept. So Christ allowed himself to to be crucified so he could merge then after his death with Mary Magdalene and actually channel through her and um, and and support her on the journey and she was the true founder of the of the um, the Christian faith that we that most of our kind of Western culture is is connected to and um, and I think she did a pretty pretty amazing job because in the Celtic Christian Church like the Cathars and even in the Church of England now there's still that very much that feminine um, place where women can be can be um, uh, vicars um, and uh, uh, priests and um, in the Cathar traditions it was run by the women for a thousand years and they they managed to to um, survive unnoticed for a thousand years because because they they did it very humbly very very sustainably they didn't build massive churches they didn't uh, ha have like a hierarchical si uh, system or anything like that but um, so so Mary Magdalene really very calmly and peacefully revolutionized the the journey that that Christ began that's what I believe and I think she she really set the scene for for the future for the for the femininity to come through then I think the the interesting element of uh, throughout history was the the presence of um, Bridget and Bridget uh, was from the Brigantia from from Ireland and actually Ireland was very much run in a similar way as the Cathars hidden kind of in the cracks of of the Catholic Church I would say where where it was the women holding the spirituality and coming through as healers and herbalists and and um, uh, counselors and, and uh, really holding that that role and and um, they traveled and they found they found places they came to to Glastonbury after the Roman Romans left the country in a complete mess um, and I think I think they were brought over here by visiting um, royals from from uh, <coughs> Scandinavia that came again to this country and that has been uh, documented so it's not just the Vikings that came in the seven hundred well eight nine hundreds um, but um, but they the Scandinavians have visited this these shores many many times and they were very much in tune with with the 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 Celts uh, throughout the British Isles so that the, the coming here of of um, the Brigantias, which later was um, they were called Bridget, that was again to to kind of re reignite the work that Mary Magdalene had had begun uh, and 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 really sown sowed the seeds in this land of Avalon in Glastonbury. And they were already starting to come, and and the Bridgets came here to nurture the the plants that were starting to grow, or the saplings that were starting to grow from the seeds that were sown here, um, uh, you know, five hundred years before. And thanks to that, uh, there now again we have the. The abundance of those seeds that have grown into full a full crop of 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 beauty, and you see it celebrated everywhere. That divine feminine is being celebrated everywhere in the hearts of of every person that that is uh, awoken really in in many different ways in many different forms, and um, you know that that. That makes me extremely happy. Yeah, you're right. That's 
I didn't I didn't know half of the things you just said. So it was <laughs> so interesting. Cool. And yeah, thank you to all Pleasure. for talking with us and thank you for sharing your wisdom. Pleasure. And being part of the goddess conversation. I hope we have a lovely evening and thank you on behalf of everyone that watches this. Thank you.